Hello everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, it's been a funny couple of days, obviously with the market, and um, uh, I've actually recorded a couple of videos. I don't normally record so many videos, but I've recorded a couple of videos. The last two videos has had, between them, I think over 12,000, 30,000 odd views, with many people taking the time uh, to comment and obviously let us know what their thoughts are. And I think it's a very important thing of basically trying to get our community and the, the people that are subscribed to this channel to actually share ideas and you will see from these comments um, they come from a whole broad range of people and they've got very different views uh, some really disagreeing with me some agreeing with me in some sorts other people making really good points about where we're going and what what's going to happen and I think it's interesting for uh, for us to all to see what other people are commenting on so please do take your time to like subscribe to the channel go through the rest of my uh, video and and uh, obviously have a look at some of the comments on the videos concerned I will uh, mention those two videos um, thank you take care Right, let's crack on and read some of the comments. Um, the First of all, the, the two videos that we've posted in the last couple of days, the first one was posted the day before yesterday and it was called Mortgages and it was to do with mortgages in the next year, what to do in 2022-2023 and, and then that was followed up by another, more, another video called Run or Buy Properties, First Time Buyer Mortgage Crash Opportunities. Is it a good time to buy or not? So um, those are the two videos. But let's crack on and let's start reading some of these comments. Olivia 1971 writes, It won't be a short-term thing. Lenders will be waiting for decisions on interest rates, which won't be happening until November. The housing market will be frozen until 2023. Tom C.E. Well, Tom C.E. sounds like a bit of a chilled out guy. He's probably having a beer somewhere. And he says, panic is everywhere. But I'm the same as you. I'm looking for opportunities as a mid-sized portfolio landlord. Great content and nice to find your channel. Thank you very much, Tom. Nitro T. writes, in the current climate, is shared ownership for first-time buyers in London a bad strategy? to get into the get onto the property ladder my answer in all honesty is I've never been a big fan of a shared ownership um, from the start of it um, or help to buy although I've advised on them and obviously that it's right for some people what I would say with shared ownership and my gripe with shared ownership is it's actually good for the developer not so good for the for the people that are going to buy the share unless unless you've got a clear vision and means of staircasing quickly okay so what I mean by that is yes it's so okay to buy a 25% 50% share but you've got you don't want to be a sitting tenant there for a long long time you want to be progressing things and the problem with shared ownership is because you're sharing the profits with another developer especially if you've got a lower share especially like 25% that doesn't work to your advantage that's not to your favor however if you're a young professional or you are on the way up and you think your earnings are going to get better or you perceive that you're going to get some money coming to you so you can staircase then you can make it work um, is it a good opportunity is it, is it a good time to buy I would say it's never a great time to buy new build properties so if it's a new build probably not if it's an older property and you've got a clear vision of where you're going then obviously it, it can be suited for some people but um, it really depends on your circumstances and where you are in your life. Dawood Mohammed says, "Man, I got a remortgage in January with a, you know, with a crying face." Dan Collin writes, "I've been following you for a while. You've always put on a level-headed content. I'm glad I fixed all my mortgages for five years in 2021-2022." When they printed all that money in 2020, I knew there was trouble ahead. And when my fixed rate deals come to an end, I will be selling. Landlords have become whipping boys and this is the final straw for me. I'm not risking my pension. Very, very useful comment there. London, England says, 
Come on, man, you don't need 2020 vision to see it's all doing downhill from here. We're looking at 30 to 40% collapse within 24 months. Next year, the job losses will begin. Ignore what this guy is saying. He's just waffling. Don't buy any property now unless you can afford to lose money. ZA writes, I have four to five of my properties as five-year fixes until 2027, except the one ending in 2024. A lot of uncertainty at present. Glad I acted promptly. Rates ranging from 1.49 to 3.61. I'm 100% going to butcher this name here, so I'm just going to call it Tofik. You certainly did tell us for quite a while now. For first time buyers looking to buy uh, immediately, would you go for a five-year fix or two-year fixed? Good enough for now. Too big risk to hope the market will stabilize by then. I've actually recorded a um, video on the topic of whether you should go for a two-year fixed or five-year fixed. I probably recorded it only about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. I know a lot's changed, but the fundamentals are there. And I try to address some of the points and some of the key things people should consider for opting for a two-year or a five-year fix. Um, so go and check that video out. It's on my channel. Um, so uh, and, and let me know what you think. Yami Dodger. Fantastic photograph, by the way, on the, on the here. Don't even think about buying while interest rates, cost of living and inflation is... Uh, racketing it's gonna get a lot worse and the pound is crashing drastically let the estate agents and mortgage brokers take a hit in their pocket the last couple of years they have ripped off potential buyers by massively over inflating property valuation as for why to let landlords the government needs to cap how many properties they can own they're making it far too hard for first-time buyers to get on the ladder and finally, uh, we've got a comment from Malwidjat. Uh, I'm not going to even pronounce the surname here, but uh, is one of my favorite comments here. I can see your videos make a lot of sense. And being at the forefront of, you, you can see what's going on in the market. I've said on this channel, interest rate would begin to rise. And thank you in your efforts in advising people to take action however there is one issue i have Piam, and that is your continued refusal to reinstate your mustache we can see just a year ago life with a mustache was much better rates were good the uk was coming out of lockdown and the economy was buoyant even putin was still a respectable sta statesman i urge you to bring back the mustache for the sake of the world economy and i have to say um, I do miss the moustache um, and I might have to bring it back after that comment. Thank you very much everybody. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you have found it useful, if you want me to do something a little bit different like this, um, do let me know. Leave a comment uh, on, on the channel and I will try to listen to you, obviously, but also try to reply to you. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.